Hello everybody. Welcome to a special program that the Hardwick Gazette and HCTV are jointly doing to bring you interviews of the candidates in Vermont's primary election. The primary this year is August 13th. We'll be interviewing all the candidates in four Senate districts and five House districts that the 11 towns of the Hardwick Gazette are uh, represented by. So, You'll be able to watch these at hctv.us or read them at hardwickgazette.org and each uh, place will be linked to the other. So we'll bring you now interviews of your local candidates. Thanks for watching. Well, uh, I grew up in Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, uh, Orleans County, Albany, Irishburg area. Uh, about 28 years ago, I married my wife and we moved down, I moved down here. Um, we live in Walden. We've been there the whole time that we've been together. Uh, I've been on the school board in the town of Walden. Uh, I've worked for the state of Vermont for over 30 years and I recently retired from doing that. Uh, I worked in Department of Corrections, I've worked for the Department of Fish and Wildlife, uh, Agency of Transportation, and I retired from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, I feel it's important that I run uh, for the simple reason that I believe that the state is becoming unaffordable for everyone. Um, the taxes and fees that are being passed and put onto us are just unsustainable and I'd like to be a part of a discussion to hopefully change that. Um, I don't consider myself a politician, but I do consider myself level-headed, and I listen to people, and I believe we need a voice from this area back down in Montpelier. That's why I feel I'd be a good candidate to put in there. I grew up in Hardwick, Vermont. I went to Hazen. Um, I moved away, I was a creative director, I ran an art department and creative department. Um, I moved back, I have small children, who or children who go to school at Hazen and at Hardwick Elementary. Uh, I, my commitment is that I love my community and I work really hard to advocate for my own children. It felt really important to give back to my community and be willing to advocate for other children as well as my own. Well, after being on a school board serving on that, I've seen the challenges that come from trying to meet the balance between what's good for people in the towns, what they can afford, and what's right for the children. Education is top. We have to have a good education system. But at the same time, we can't go broke doing that. Um, without a good way to fund it, it actually affects the children because the parents have to either work two jobs, they have to keep changing things so that the kids aren't maybe getting enough at home like they were. Um, and I, I think that the way it's funded is not the right path. I think we need to change that. Um, taking it from what I consider an inflated COVID uh, real estate prices and using that as a base for what we pay is, is incorrect. And I think we need to find a new avenue to do that. Um, taxes is definitely rising and it's really unsustainable for our communities. Um, it's really important to find that delicate balance between giving our children an excellent um, education that makes them able to move forward in the future while figuring out how to make our taxes more equitable. Um, I think part of it is looking at whether or not we continue to do property taxes or versus income tax to make that balance out. Well, first, I think we need to look at all the regulations that have to be met in order for someone to build or renovate. And I think we need to back off on the regulations to a certain point. We still have to have checks and balances, don't get me wrong. But we need to make it so that people can actually look at and have the ability to build, to renovate, and to make use of what we already have. 
I think it's really important to look at the long-term rental versus the short-term rental and how that works, uh, making it so that Vermonters who want to raise their children or want to work on farms or want to participate in owning a home have access, have possibly some kind of assistance in doing that. Uh, and being aware that a lot of our housing is being bought up by people out of state and how we can balance that. I think the state needs to work with the homeless population and encourage them. Um, you know, employment is one thing with them where if we can encourage them and we can get them employed, then they can start working toward uh, being able to have um, a place to live, place to call their own whether it be starting out in a community type setting, housing where it's you know almost like a hostile kind of situation or whatever you wanna call it. I think that if we're going to encourage these people, they're gonna have a better thought of what they can do for themselves and encouraging them and giving them the opportunities I think would go a long way in helping curb the homelessness in the state. I think it's a really complex issue, and I don't have all the answers, but I think it's something where we have to look at health care, mental health services, and the long-term and short-term housing problem that we already know we have. So I think it's finding a way to weave those things together and come up with creative solutions. That's a great question. Um, being resilient, I mean, Vermont is resilient as a whole because of the way we are in this state. Uh, this community. We work hard. Uh, we have to look at ways to protect from floodings that are happening and, and those events that are affecting us more and more. We have to look at what it is that is actually the problem. Is it because buildings have been put up by rivers or you know have we restricted the river flow? We need to look at what the root cause of that is. We, we know there's you know, talk of climate change, and, and that's why we're getting these. If that's the case, then we need to start looking at ways, <clears throat> excuse me, to um, just rethink how we do things. We can't just keep building and filling in and making it so everything's constricted and, and we get more and more problems. Um, electric vehicles, I, I don't know if the answer is to, uh, you know, push electric vehicles you, because the minute you start pigeonholing yourself into one thing, we still have costs associated with it. Going electric isn't going to solve everything. It, it just won't work. So we need to take a step back and we need to balance the best way to do this. If there's electric vehicles, somebody wants one, yeah, sure. Give them the opportunity to do that and, and make it so that it's affordable. But we still have to have the, the right to drive whatever we want. We can't be forced upon a certain way of doing things. It just doesn't work, especially in this area. Resiliency, I think we're getting better at it, but we need more state help. The local communities need to be able to prepare for these things with help from the state. Funding gaps, I'm not really sure what those options could be, but we do tax for electric currently. So I imagine as that expands, that will continue. So <clears throat> the state has, has already set law with that. And that is already done. I don't believe that I have a right to go in and make a determination on that. I believe the doctor and the person that is dealing with it have the right to make a decision and I, I'm not gonna stick my nose in that. That's not something that I believe is my place. Um, in the state of Vermont, it's a constitutional right and I support a person's right to choose. I think for individuals to choose to have children, we need to make the state friendly to families so that our children can continue to thrive. Um, I think at a, at a federal level, it should be something that's already addressed the way we addressed it, that it's a constitutional right. Well, I'm going to be hopefully voting on issues, and I'm not going to be voted voting party line. I'm not going to do that. I look at what is best for the state, 
what is best for the people in these three communities, like I said, that haven't been represented enough in the past years. Um, I'm level-headed, I listen to people, I'll talk to people. I'm gonna seek out the people that have the knowledge about subjects in Montpelier, and I'm gonna ask their opinion. And I am just a normal person like everybody else, and I'm just trying to make a change. I'm really passionate about healthcare and having access, equitable access to, to healthcare for, for children and adults. I think that your healthcare being tied to your job is very limiting. I think it's a mother shouldn't have to choose between working and giving, having her children have quality healthcare.